Hey guys, Richard Holdner here. The question for today, would you rather have a 4.8 liter with less boost or a 2.4 liter with more boost? Now the obvious answer is having the bigger motor, but with more boost, that's not one of the options. Stop trying to cheat. What would you rather have, an LS or a Honda? In this video, we're gonna compare the big 4.8 liter LS to the small 2.4 liter Honda. Now in reality, a 4.8 liter really isn't a big V8, at least not compared to big blocks, but the 4.8 liter LS is twice as big as the smaller 2.4 liter K-series Honda, yet both of these motors under boost made basically the same power. So here's the question, what would you rather have, the big 4.8 liter at lower boost or the small 2.4 liter at higher boost with lots of RPM? Let's get going. To get things started in our comparison between the 4.8 liter LS and the half displacement 2.4 liter Honda motor. Let's start out with the LS. This was a 4.8 liter that we used on a lot of different tests. It was a stock block, stock crank, Gen 4 rod, JE piston. It had a 706 head with valve springs on it. It had head studs and gaskets on it. We had the truck intake, the truck throttle body. It had long tube headers. We ran all of this with the, on the LS motor, we ran it with a Holley HP management system. On the Honda, we would do it with an AEM. But on the 4.8 liter, it also had a small camshaft in it from JFR. It was a 595 lift, a 224, 228 degree duration split and 112 degree lobe separation angle. And we ran the thing first NA with the long tube headers and no accessories and things the way that we do it. And this combination produced a little over 400 horsepower, 401.7 and 368 foot-pounds or 369 foot-pounds of torque. Then we added a small turbo. We actually ran a number of different turbos on the 4.8 and a number of different turbos on the 2.4, but we wanted to show you with the same kind of turbo, even though the same turbo isn't ideal for both of these combinations, it worked very well and made very similar power. It just did it at different boost levels because of the different displacements and the different starting power output of each one of the motors. So on the 4.8, we ran a precision turbo 62 millimeter with a air to water intercooler. This was run at about between seven and seven and a half and eight pounds. It was 7.6 or 7.7 at the horsepower peak and run in this combination. Let's see our test description here. And we ran both of these also on E85. And we had 22 degrees of total timing out at the power peak on the 4.8 8 liter. So it was tuned fairly well. We this and run this way, it made 569 horsepower, almost 570, 569.6, and 541.3 foot pounds of torque. So this did exactly what we would expect on this combination. The turbo was big enough, although the hot side's getting a little bit small on this combination, but the turbo was big enough to support this power level. It did what we would expect in terms of boost and power output, and the little turbo worked good on this relatively small displacement uh, 4.8 liter. So now let's take a look at what happened when we ran the same turbo on the Honda, which is 2.4 liter, so it's exactly half the displacement of the 4.8. After running our 4.8 liter with the turbo, now we can take a look at what happened when we ran the half displacement 2.4 liter K-series Honda with the same turbo. Now we ran this thing NA and it was equipped with, it had a cam, the stock, it had stock heads on it, it did have a header on it, and we ran it with a Skunk 2 intake manifold, their ultra race manifold, and a set of their skunk two heads. Although I don't think we got the tuning exactly right on this thing. Um, I think that there's more power to be had with this combination. Um, it definitely made more power with the Kinsler stack injection than this common manifold, but we wanted to run this common manifold, the common plenum manifold, to run to be able to run the turbo on it. So run naturally aspirated this uh, this was a JDM uh you know <laughs> junkyard esque motor that I bought and we just did those upgrades on on the dyno. So run with the skunk 2 cams and the intake manifold this K24 produced 260 horsepower and peak torque was 175 foot pounds. And if you see the interesting thing about these motors is that how broad the torque curve is. So it was producing, even down at 4,000 RPM, it was producing 169 foot-pounds. And it carried that to 168 foot-pounds 
almost 4,000 RPM spread where it was making within a few foot pounds of each other. So it doesn't have a torque curve. It has a torque plateau. <laughs> it's basically just flat for a long way. And you can see that has a positive effect on the power curve. So here's what happened when we added our turbo. When we added that same precision, the PTE 62 turbo. And we ran it up to about the same power output as, and I'll do a direct comparison of the LS versus the Honda, but it made 580 horsepower and torque checked in at 403 foot pounds of torque. And if you see, you look at the curve once we added the boost, it has a similar thing. It's flat for a long ways and it has a rising power curve. As I said, 580 horsepower and over 400 foot pounds. And if we could really in this power range, there would be a much better turbo choice for this combination because we could get the turbo to come on sooner than this 62 millimeter. Um, but it's a fairly good size for what we were doing. We can make good power with this. And we had to run about 13 and a half or so, maybe 14 pounds of boost on this to get it to make this power output. So again, more boost, smaller motor, you know, that's kind of common. So now let's take a look at a comparison between the naturally aspirated motors and the turbocharged versions of each of these motors. So this will be an interesting comparison. We'll compare the NA motors first and then we'll compare both of the turbocharged motors because they made similar power once we added boost. Now, if we take a look at the, the K24 2.4 liters, we see that this thing made 260 horsepower and 175 foot pounds of torque. And if we compare this and overlay this to our mild 4.8 liter run in NA trim, we see what happens in why bigger motors, <laughs> why, why they're so popular, because they make so much more torque production. They make their peak power at a much lower engine speed. This one made peak power at 64 or 6,500, 6,400. Whereas the Honda actually made peak power out at 8,500 RPM. So almost 2,000 RPM higher. And that's the, you know, four valve, small displacement, lots of head flow. We obviously put, put a, a bit more cam timing, relatively speaking, in the K24. And we're revving that thing out actually pretty good. But you can see the big difference in torque production. So if in a big heavy vehicle like a truck, obviously one of these would be a much better choice, which is why they tend to put these small displacement in, even though a 2.4 is a fairly good size displacement for these small motors. I mean, they make a two liter version of this also. But why they put this in smaller, lighter weight vehicles. And the other thing that they do to offset this difference is to get the kind of acceleration that they want, the performance that they want in these smaller motors is they change the gearing, obviously. So the gearing is much more dramatic. So you're staying in the top of the RPM range where the thing is going to accelerate well and it's making lots of power. Then the, the interesting thing is if you take a look and we'll see this more when we add the boost to it, if you take a look at the relative torque curves on the 4.8, it has a torque curve. So it goes up and reaches a peak and then, and then falls back down. Whereas on the Honda motor, it has a nice flat torque curve and carries that. And that's what allows it to carry the RPM out and make more and make peak power at a much higher engine speed. So now let's check out what happened when we added boost to both of these combinations. So we've taken a look at the naturally aspirated power combinations and between the 4.8 liter and the 2.4 liter. Now let's take a look at what happened when we ran boost on them. Obviously there was a big difference in the NA power outputs, 260 horsepower versus 400. But here's what happened when we added boost to both of them. Now we have comparable peak power numbers. We have 580 for the Honda and 570 for the 4.8 liter. And that could be adjusted obviously with another half pound of boost or something on the 4.8. So they can make the same power. They're just going to do it at different engine speeds and different boost levels on the 4.8 liter. We were in the 7.7 .7 to 8 pound range. With the Honda, we were up at the 14 pound range. And so it just took more boost, obviously, to make the same power on the smaller displacement motor. Although here's some cool math stuff. If we took a look at the NA power output, even though the 2.4 liter was basically 50% of the displacement of the 4.8 liter, the 260 horsepower was more than 50%. In fact, it was about 64, 65% of the 400 horsepower offered by the NA 4.8 liter. So, you know, specifically, uh, from a specific output standpoint, obviously the Honda was more efficient. Now it had more mods. It had bigger camshafts and had a different intake manifold. So obviously that's a different kind of a comparison. But when we ran, and what that means is that it took relatively less boost on the Honda 
to reach this power output than it did on the 4.8 liter LS combination. So again, different strokes for different folks. Which one would you guys pick? Do you want like the more torque and power offered by the LS motor? Or do you like the high RPM and more boost offered by the Honda in this channel? We like them all. Our Richard Holder guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I will keep on testing.